Yes.
be seated. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and our distinguished guests. I'm David Poole, president of the University of Mount Olive, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to this fall commencement ceremony. We're delighted you've joined us for this celebration that so many have anticipated for so long. Today we honor individuals who are receiving graduate degrees as well as members of the undergraduate class of December 2019 who have completed degree requirements through the School of Arts and Sciences, the School of Agriculture and Biological Sciences, and the Tillman School of Business. You see, the University of Mount Olive is about transforming your life. So stand up if you're a first-generation college student. Stand up. And stay standing. Stand up if you are a single mother or single father. Stand up, please. And stay standing. And stand up if you're an active duty military veteran or veteran. And stand up if your life has been transformed by the University of Mount Olive. Always good when everybody stands up. Have a seat. Please be seated. You see, UMO is making an impact in graduating and transforming lives and in individuals who are going to make a difference in their communities. Combined applications for graduation this week include 33 candidates for master's degrees, 182 candidates for bachelor's degrees, and 63 candidates for associate's, de associates degrees for a total of 278 individuals today. Add these numbers to spring 2019 and summer 2019, and the total overall graduates for the 2019 calendar year are 817. The invocation today will be given by Pastor Lester Rector, Director of Campus Ministries at the University of Mount Olive, and then Mr. Earl Worley, Jr., Chairman of the Board of Trustees, will bring greetings on their behalf, followed by Dr. David Hines, who will present the Thomas R. Morris Award for Academic Ex Excellence. At this time, please stand for the national anthem performed by Professor Lauren Sager, followed by the invocation. And gentlemen, please remove your caps. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Let us pray together. Father, this is an incredible day. And your word says that your loving kindness is better than life. That one day with you is better than a thousand anywhere else. Your word says that you give us today 
our daily bread. So Lord, it's, it's important for us to recognize that you put great value in the one day, living one day at a time. So this morning we give you thanks for this day which you have made. And today we choose to rejoice. Lord, it's not just a choice, Father, but there's great calls for rejoicing today. There's great calls for us to be glad in today. And so, Father, I pray over this ceremony and the graduates in this room, those who are turning a page and going beyond the open door, that they would not be afraid to go further than they've ever gone, dream bigger than they've ever dreamed, risk more than they've ever risked, stretching far beyond their comfort zone with the understanding that they do not do it alone, that you are Emmanuel, not just in the month of December, but that you are with them all the time, that you go before them all the time, that you move through them all the time. So let it be so because you believe in them. Let it be so because you have made this day significant and let it be so because these graduates and all that they are called to do is significant. Father, we say thank you, Lord, for blessing our graduates, blessing our students, blessing our faculty and staff, and for blessing the University of Mount Olive. And everybody in the room said, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. <clears throat> graduates, parents, fac mem family members, faculty, staff, fellow trustees, and friends of the University of Mount Olive. It is my pleasure to bring you greetings on behalf of the Board of Trustees. We have gathered on this special day to celebrate the accomplishments of the graduating class who have worked so hard to earn their degrees about to be awarded. This is a truly a great day in their lives as well as the life of the university. As a graduate of the university, I can appreciate the kind of education that I received here an education that prepared me for my career, but more importantly, an education that prepared me for life. It is my hope and prayer that you will leave the university well prepared intellectually, morally, and spiritually to face the world. I trust that you will take with you the wonderful experiences that you've had here at the university. In addition, be grateful to those close to you who have helped make your journey possible. As you prepare to leave the University of Mount Olive, Go with our richest blessings, and we wish you Godspeed with the next phase of your life. The Thomas R. Morris Award for Academic Excellence is presented to the senior from our traditional graduating class with the highest grade point average with the most credit hours taken at the University of Mount Olive. This award is made possible through the generosity of Dr. Tom Morris of Wilmington, North Carolina. And it includes a $3,000 check. Somebody's gonna have a Merry Christmas. <laughs> the recipient of the Morris Award today is Emily Woodward of Princeton, North Carolina. Come on up. The daughter of Jennifer and Dennis Woodward, Emily completed her degree with a major in special education. Assistant Dean Amanda Bullard Maxwell states, Emily embodies the ideal personal attributes of a special education teacher. She is loving and creative and enthusiastic, confident and calm, humorous and easygoing, dedicated and optimistic. These assets were recognized right away by the Johnson County Public School System that hired Emily before she actually completed her student teaching assignment. <laughs> Dr. Harold Griffin adds, Emily is and will be an outstanding professional in the field of special education. Her work with children with disabilities is simply amazing. Emily, on a personal note, I would add, we know that God has great things in store for you in service to children. Jesus himself said, truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you did it unto me. A student who personifies our university covenant, join me in congratulating Emily.
At this time, I'd like to recognize uh, a special guest who is with us before I introduce our commencement speaker here. And flanking on both sides of our special guest, who is Mrs. Mitzi Hopgood. Mitzi, would you stand up? Let's recognize Mitzi here with us. And if you would stay standing, and on one side is our original First Lady, Mrs. Rose Raper, and on the other side, our current First Lady, Mrs. Mary Poole. Would you two stand? Thank you. Well, the Reverend Ronnie Hobgood serves as the president of the Convention of the Original Free Will Baptist and is an active member of our University Board of Trustees. He graduated from Mount Olive College with his Associates of Science degree in religion and obtained his Bachelor of Arts in Religion from North Carolina Wesleyan College and his Master's of Arts in Christian Education at Campbell University Divinity School. He served the original Free Will Baptist denomination in several capacities over the years and was elected president of the convention in 2016. He's been in the pastoral ministry since his ordination in 1978 and currently serves as pastor of LaGrange First Free Will Baptist Church in Lenore County. He's a past recipient of the P.T. Lucas Award for Pastoral Leadership, and he and his wife Mitzi have two children, Jessica H. Moss and Joshua T. Hobgood, and two grandchildren, Emma and William Moss. Please join me in welcoming Reverend Ronnie Hobgood as our December 2019 commencement speaker. I just want to express my appreciation to Dr. Poole and to this faculty and staff here and these graduates and all these guests for this great honor to be here today to share this address with these graduates. And it is my prayer that we will find the Lord's blessing in what we're doing today and know that he has been with us on this entire journey and he will continue to be with us throughout our lives. Mount Olive is a very special place to me as Dr. Poole mentioned a while ago, I'm a graduate of this institution. I came here in 1976 in the fall, and the University of Mount Olive has been a part of my life ever since. So 43 years I've been associated with this great university. And I'll tell you, I was thinking today as we were coming across for the exercises here, all this area here was not here back in my day, as Miss Rose knows and Dr. Pelt. I practice my golf out here, and I still need to be practicing golf uh, here, but that's where we took golf lessons here. So I have seen the growth of this university, and I praise the Lord for what has taken place on this campus. And on behalf of the Convention of Original Free Will Baptists, I want to say congratulations to these graduates today from our churches and from our convention office, and may the Lord bless you as you go forward. However, I do understand. I was at graduation in August here. My daughter-in-law graduated with her master's from the business school. And the commencement speaker said this, and I say it too. I know you really didn't come to hear me speak today. Uh, you came to get a degree today, and so I'm going to try to stay within my time limit this morning. But I'm thankful again for this opportunity here. As a preacher the gospel of Jesus Christ, I do have a few points I want to share with you this morning. And I base these points upon one verse of scripture from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1, where the apostle Paul wrote, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Doesn't matter what that calling may be, whether it's a preacher, whether it's a teacher, a musician, or a business leader, you have been called by God. Dr. Michael Cogdell, who is the founding dean of Campbell, Campbell University Divinity School, wrote a book recently entitled, It's Worth a Life. And in his book, he reminds us all that the call of God is not exclusive to clergy. God's call can come to all, and it is worth a life to serve God, whether as a clergyman or a lay person, a business leader, a musician, or whatever your calling might be, it is worth a life to dedicate it unto the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so as you go out on a new journey from this day after you receive your degree, you need to honor God with the blessings that you have received here at this university. And the Lord kept leading me to these thoughts as I was preparing for this day 
in the season of Advent and Christmas. In many churches, including mine, there are four words that always come to mind during this season. Those words are hope and peace and joy and love. And so I want to focus on those words because in the future, you may not remember a word I say today, but maybe if you're in one of those churches that celebrates Advent in that way, when you hear those words once again, you'll be reminded of this special day in your life. So I want us to take a fresh look at these important words of this holy season. First of all, I want to encourage you to share with your world the Lord of hope. Hope is important to life. We know that life is difficult. How many of you graduates experienced that during your course of study? That at times the course was difficult. But hope allows you to approach your problems with a mindset that I believe is suitable for success. And with that, you can accomplish your goals and you're accomplishing a goal today. In all walks of life, people are searching for something better. And often we all get caught up in our world today thinking that that life that is better can be found in the right job, the right car, wealth, and the list can go on. And all those things may be important to some degree, but there is something better than all of that. And that something that is better is Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. The Apostle Peter wrote, Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy he has given us new birth unto a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Notice that Peter said a living hope that has been made possible to us by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And let me underscore, this is not an unsure hope. This is a certain hope that we know Jesus Christ, we know he is with us, we know he's gonna be with us as Lester prayed in his prayer a few moments ago, Emmanuel, God with us, not only during this season of the year, but every day of our life, and, and especially in the future as you launch out into new areas of service here. So know of this certain hope that can be found in Jesus Christ and let your life be grounded upon Jesus Christ and what he has taught us in this word. And we should be reminded that he's also said when we rely on this living hope, that it's a hope that will never perish. It will never spoil or fade because it is kept in heaven for you. It is an eternal hope. Your place of service can certainly be an instrument of hope. These are some things I would encourage you to do as you spread the good news of hope in your world. Look for the good in those around you. You know, as a pastor, I know the people in my congregation that all the time are giving me gloom and doom stories. Any pastors out there know what I'm talking about? Or teachers here? And I'll be honest with you, I probably don't visit them as often as I do those who give me hope and give me encouragement here. I love to hear people look around our congregation and the places that I am in life and look for the good in people. And praise the Lord for the values that you see in your coworkers, in your fellow students, and those that are around you in your family. Because success will come to you through the Lord of hope. The second word that I would approach this morning is share with your world the Lord of peace. When we look at our world today, we may ask the question, and it's a serious question to ponder, where is hope? Is or and where is peace? Where is peace? Is there room for peace in our world today? Is it possible here? On your Christmas cards often, you're gonna find those words, aren't you? Peace on earth. Any of you already received a card that has those words on it? We're looking for peace on earth. And let me remind you that we're living on this earth. God has entrusted us to take care of this earth and to be found faithful to this earth here. But I want to go further and say this morning that peace is possible. You know why I know it's possible? because I've put my trust in the one who is the light of the world and his name is Jesus. The apostle Paul wrote these words, 
for just a few words here in Colossians 3.15, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. That is an abiding peace. See, we can face troubles in life, but we can still have the peace of God, can't we? We still have the peace of God. As a young fellow, I lost my father at the age of 11. He was only 32. But I saw in my mother, and she taught it to us, that we can still have peace, and we can move forward, and we know that Jesus Christ will be with us. So our lives may not follow a perfect plan like we thought, but God is in the midst of it all. And that great verse of Scripture in Romans 8, 28 comes to mind, that all things work together to good to those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Again, notice it didn't say everything that happens to us is good. Everything that may happen to you out in your world, in your new job, in your area of service, may not always be good. It may not always be perfect. But you can know the peace of God. Jim Simula, the pastor of the Brooklyn Tabernacle there in New York, he wrote a book, called The Church That God Blesses. And he mainly was speaking to pastors and laity within the church, but he said this, ministers and laity should not be surprised when problems arise in the church. Now, as a pastor of 40-some years, I've had a few problems through, the, through my ministry. But my good friend Gary Bailey sitting here one time, I had a particular man in my church he was one of those, if you said go to the right, he said, let's go to the left. If you said up, he said, go down, you know. And he was encouraging me. He said, don't even think about leaving your church because he's probably got two brothers in the next church you're going to go to. All right. And so I followed that advice. So problems are going to arise. The difference will be how do we handle, the, handle those problems? We, we handle them with the love and gentleness that Jesus Christ has called us to be what we ought to be in our world here. You see, as we mature in our faith, as we grow in our faith and in the Lord and in his word, it will be under the guidance of the Holy Spirit that he will always help us do the right thing and encourage people in their lives. So if we want to bring peace to the world, let me share three little important tidbits with you this morning. First of all, I want to encourage you to slow down in your life. Now, my wife's sitting out there, she's probably saying, I want you to replay this back to yourself, you know, here. Some of you could say that to your spouse, couldn't you? We do need to slow down sometimes, I think, and enjoy life. And this season is a great example of this. Slow down and enjoy what we're really celebrating, that we're celebrating the greatest love the world has ever known when God sent his only son to the world to be our savior. Another thing I've learned in life about bringing peace is that don't make mountains out of mold hills. You ever known anybody to do that? You know, some little thing happens in life and they make it a mountain here. Don't do that. Sit back and evaluate and know that God's going to guide you through that. Another thing maybe we need to do is unclutter our world and unclutter our mind. I don't know about you, but as I look at the news, I read various books and magazines and the like, you know, my mind can be cluttered with so much that's going on into the world. And sometimes I have to do exactly like the Lord taught me to do. I have to go in my closet of prayer and just meditate and reflect on the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It, that reminds me of Suzanne Wesley the mother of John and Charles Wesley. They lived in a small house there in England. They didn't have the luxury that we have of many rooms and a home. But she always wore an apron. And they tell me from what I read and studied about her life is that when it was time for her to go in her closet of prayer, she would take her apron with her two hands and throw it over her head. And they say that when mama did that, the children knew to sit down and be quiet because mama had entered the closet of prayer and there was to be no noise until that apron came back down. We need to learn that lesson in life, don't we? To find those special places of where we can have our own peace and then we can carry peace into our world. So I pray that you will be an instrument of peace in the world and let the people that you come in contact with, know the Lord of peace. 
The third word is joy. Share with your world the Lord of joy. Joy has been defined as pleasure and happiness or thoughts that delight you. I trust that you have found joy here at the University of Mount Olive through your educational process and journey. Dr. Poole talked about lives being transformed a few moments ago. I can really say that my life, my two years here at Mount Olive College were transforming to my life. Professors that are still involved in my life, like Dr. Michael Peld and his wife Betty here, Frank Harrison and his wife Barbara, you know, that were at the breakfast this morning, and many others that are out here in this congregation today. You were a part of that transformation in my life. But as I use the word joy as an adjective, I'm reminded how you found joy sometime. Did you find joy when you got an A or maybe a B on an exam? Anybody find joy there? Now, I mentioned Dr. Michael Pell. I love him with all my heart here. But I'll tell you, back in that day, professors used red ink pens. I was telling Dr. Poole about this. And when I get my papers back, it looked like there was more red ink on my paper than black ink, you know. But I came to appreciate his love because he wanted the best for me. I was a sophomore here at the University of Mount Olive when I was asked to do a, my first funeral as a minister. I was, you know, 19 years old. And my pastor, he couldn't do it. He said, you can do it. I made my way back to Mount Olive that Sunday night. The first thing I did the next Monday morning was call Dr. Pelt because I could do that. Called him out of his home. I said, I need to come talk to you. And I told him what was going on. And he sat down with me. I don't know if he remembers this, but he sat down with me in his living room. And he told me what a minister should be doing as he conducts a funeral and bringing comfort and peace to a family. And I haven't forgot that in my life. And that's the kind of professors that I think you have here and I hope that you have here that care about you, whether it's in the coursework or whether it's about things that were happening in your life. And so when I see him in his pelt and I see Mr. Raper here, I am reminded of the joy that they have, as they have been a part of my life. But also in this season of Christmas, as we talk about joy, Isaac Watts wrote one of my favorite Christmas carol, Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. That's good news for us. The shepherds rejoice when the angel announced to them the Savior's birth. The wise men rejoiced when they saw that star in the sky and they followed it to the house of Jesus. Because they all understood that for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And so the joy of the Lord should be seen in our life by our families, our friends, and our co-workers. How can you bring joy to your life and to the lives of others? I'll share just a few possible ways that you can do that. The first thing is smile. Just smile. We need people that smile today. You know what? That's one of the things I remember about professors when I was here. They were always happy, smiling, and helpful. And I'm thankful for that. And secondly, they always were willing to give a compliment. How many of you out here like to receive a compliment? Be honest. Now, y'all not raising hands. I know y'all. I'm going to have to have an altar call if y'all don't raise your hands out here. Okay? So be careful about that here. We all like to do that. Remember your manners and be respectful here. Do the dirty work sometimes. I've always told every congregation I've ever served that I'm willing to do whatever I ask them to do. And that reminds me of a biblical story on the Jericho Road of the man that was beaten and robbed, and yet the religious people walked by him. But who stopped to help him? The Samaritan who was hated. But you know what the Samaritan did? He got his hands dirty. I'm sure he got blood on his hands. I'm sure he got dirt on his hands. But yet, what did he do? He ministered to that man. He nurtured him. He carried him on to Jericho. And there, what did he do? He made provisions for him in that inn. And he said to that innkeeper, when I come back on my journey, if it costs more than what I've left you to take care of this man, I'll pay you <coughs> for it. So he was a person of his word. So sometimes you have to get your hands dirty as you bring joy into the world. Just simply help people. 
One of the things that is so meaningful to me that is a way that you can bring joy to people, be sure to say thank you to people. Write thank you notes. Now, I know I, I'm in a different age than many of you out here that are graduating today. Uh, I like handwritten notes, you know, but I know I also occasionally text a thank you note or email a thank you note. But I got a, a note from a good, my good friend Gary this week, just yesterday, with a thank you note that means much to me. Now, I don't know what my children are going to do with all my thank you notes. They're probably going to just, you know, chuck them on out here. But to me, they have meaning and they bring joy to my life. So be sure to thank people for what they have done. Thank your professors. Thank the leadership here at the university here and be kind and invest in people's lives. You see, the apostle Peter told us concerning our life to be ready to give an answer of the hope that is within you. What does that mean? That means to answer them about your relationship with Jesus Christ with gentleness and reverence and tell them what you believe and why you believe it. People may not believe what I believe or like what I do sometimes, and I may not like what they do or what they believe, you know, but I love them and I try to be their friend. And I'm not going to get political today. I might like whoever's in the president's office of our nation, or I may not. But you know what I'm reminded of? The scripture tells me to pray for him, no matter what party he's with. Pray for him. Why? So that you and I can live a peaceable life. So be kind to people and bring joy to people. In the Christian world, someone defined a saint this way, and I like this definition. Someone whose life makes it easier to believe in God. Do you hear that? Someone whose life makes it easier to believe in God. Does your life do that? I trust that it does. May you carry this joy of our redemption through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ into our world, that others may catch the joy that you have experienced in your life and through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The last word that I want to encourage you to share is the Lord of love. The world needs love. Eight days ago, my wife Mitzi and I were in Nashville, Tennessee, at the Grand Ole Opry at the Ram, Ram, um, Ryman Auditorium there. And Dionne Warwick, some of you older people will know who I'm talking about, closed the program. But one of her famous songs she sang that night that touched me once again, and it simply goes this way, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing that there's just too little of. What the world needs now is love, sweet love, not just for some, but for everyone. God has told us to love the world. I've often told my congregation, you don't have to like everyone, but Jesus says you have to love everyone. That's the command of our Lord here. So what the world needs is this love. Many of our free will Baptists here and maybe a few outside of that will remember Bishop L.M. Forbes who has spoken to this campus on several occasions. But one of his great quotes that I've always remembered, and he went to be with the Lord this year, he said, I love you and there's nothing in the world you can do about it. Think about that for a minute. There's nothing in the world you can do about it. But probably love is said best in that familiar scripture from John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. No greater love can you and I know than that love. One of our church fathers, Augustine, said it this way, God loves each one of us as if there was only one of us to love. If you'd have been the only one that needed loving, God would have loved you. So go into your world and love Love through your simple acts of kindness. Love by touching people. This is what I found as a minister of the gospel, that people need to be touched. Now, there's a lot of flu going around now, a sickness, and someone said to me the other day, Pastor, I think rather than shaking hands during fellowship time this week, we need to touch elbows. What do you think? I said, well, it might be a good thing this Sunday, you know. But I have found, especially when people are sick 
or going through some crisis in their life, they need your simple touch, your simple touch. And it will go much, many times further than anything you can say. So love people by touching and doing acts of kindness and helping them. And then this is an important thing, an important way to love, and that is to simply listen to them. Preachers have to work hard at this because we're used to talking. But sometimes you just need to listen and to be there. I found that so true in my 40 some years of ministry. It's not so much what I say, but they remember I was there in their time of need. And your people will remember that you were there in your time of need, whether it's your family, your place of work, or your church, wherever it might be, they will remember that. So we celebrate the coming of Jesus Christ into our lives, and I pray with grateful hearts. And as you go into your world, I pray that your love will be marked by the light of Jesus Christ, that people will see a reflection in you of the hope and the peace and the joy and the love of Jesus Christ. In the words of the Apostle Paul, be that living sacrifice that has not been conformed to this world, but a life that has been transformed by Jesus. Let your world see Jesus in you. Let the church say amen. I'd like to thank the Reverend Hobgood for his kind words, his words of love, joy, peace, and hope, words we definitely need in this day and time. At this time, I invite those students who are receiving a master's degree to please stand, and I invite President Poole and Chairman uh, Worley to join me at the podium. Please stand. President Poole, it is my pleasure to present the graduate class of December 2019, whose members were recently recognized in ceremonies where each received a traditional master's hood in the colors of their respective academic disciplines. Each of these students has fulfilled the requirements for the master's degree for which he or she is a candidate. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees as president of the University of Mount Olive, I confer upon each of you the appropriate degree with all rights and privileges appertaining thereto. And on a personal note, I extend my sincere congratulations to you all. You may move your tassels to the left side and first row can now move into place. Miss Rebecca Lynn Elmore. Miss Chris H. Hales. Tracy Alicia Hamilton. Ashton Hoover. Clelia Menjavar Sains. Krista N. Baker. Octavius T. Brooks. April Devon Corbett. Brandy A. Fillingame. Francis Michelle Gay. Kimberly Hedden. Nicole Yolanda Henderson. 
Brittany Michelle Hocutt. Amy Lynn Hortzman. <laughs> Stephanie Nicole Jackson. Sandra Carter Jarvis. Kimberly Sherelle Jones Williams. Andrew Michael Key. Lauren Skidmore Key. Carson Mac McCurdy. <laughs> Stephanie Renee Miller. Sheikah Moore. Sandra Lee Olahovich. Kristen Michelle Patterson. Congratulations. David Andrew Scholes. At this time, those students who are receiving associates and bachelor's degrees, please stand. <laughs> President Poole, it is my pleasure to present the members of the undergraduate class of December 2019 receiving associates and bachelor's degrees. Each of these students has fulfilled the requirements for degrees for which he or she is a candidate. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees as President of the University of Mount Olive, I confer upon each of you the appropriate degree with all rights and privileges appertaining thereto. And my sincere congratulations to each of you. You may move your tassels to the left side. And first row can move into place. Karsten Chavez Brown. Sierra Delin. Sierra Delin Carter. Crystal Alexis Dowdy. Walk when you hear your name. Jody Beth Foreman. Hannah B. Glover. Octavia Renee Johnson. Decoria Shanice King. Shanice Rochelle McNeil.
Aneta Gabrielle Katangi San Diego. Leticia Alston Smith. Bridget Renee Turner Saunders. Kristen Nicole Welch. Dylan Edward Wilcox. Haley Reese Bradham. Haley N. Bewing. Daniel Jacob Flanagan. Luke Mastin Holland. Morgan Ryan Jolly. Lyric Jomel Mack. Lyric Jomel Mack. Kaylee Brianna. Kaylee Brianna May. German. Hunter Lane Masimer. Morgan Lee Price. Dylan Franklin Rouse. Marion Smith, Jr. Marcus Glenn Walton. Angel Marie Weeks. Erica Lynn Willing. Hang on one second. Courtney Humphreys Barker. Zebulon Coy Barnett. Kimberly Diane Bain. Kaylee Danielle Bell. Rihanna Marie Bissett. Tarika Terrain Boone. Jonathan Wayne Brink. Kayla Ann Brooks. Kirsten Michelle Brown. Kristen Martin Canterbury. Renee Adams Couch, cum laude. Samantha Joe Croom. William Irving Dixon. Christina Marie Dalton, cum laude. Caroline Elsie Drake, cum laude. Dorothy 
Duan Anthony Ford. Rosella Ivy Garner. Tyrone V. Graham. Leia Hanley, cum laude. <laughs> Keita Vernell Hansley. Ashley Marie Hartman. Crystal Summer Helms, cum laude. Brenda Lisbeth Herrera Gonzalez. Tammy Martin Houston. Joyce S. Jernigan, magna cum laude. Brandy Nicole Johnson. Mona Lisa Jones. Anna Maria Jorge Trejo. Anna Maria Jorge Trejo. <laughs> Stephanie Elizabeth Karate. Leah Cooster Dodson. Yeah. Ethel G. Langley. Alicia or Alicia. Alicia. Alicia Little, Magna Cum Laude. Elizabeth Jill Lovin, magna cum laude. Sherletha Lowry. Taya Nashe Lowry. Taya Nashe Lowry. Jocelyn Ida. Jocelyn Ide Martinez. Amanda K. Mason, cum laude. Marquise Tavarius Maddox Sturdivant. Marquise Tavarius. Marquise Tavarius Maddox Sturdivant. Mazo. Adrian Mazo. Ashley Nicole McCormick, cum laude. Gishere. Gishere McDowell. A Asbel. Emily Marie Asbel McCoy. Latasha S. Merle. Latasha S. Merle. Naduku, right? okay. Lynetta Wooten Naduku. <laughs> Tiffany Christine O'Lee, magna cum laude. <laughs> Stephanie Conley Parkhurst, cum laude. Paquita. Paquita Adele Perkins. Woo! 
Natasha Nicole Peterson. Yolanda Cherie Rayner. Robichaud. Rebecca Lynn Robichaud. Logan Thomas Runyon. Victoria Martin Seacrest. Victoria Martin Seacrest. Tyra Monet Smallwood. Chandler Morgan Smith, summa cum laude. Take your time. Irene Tillery Smith. Ty Malik Smith, cum laude. Kristen Lee Turcott. Dina Turner, summa cum laude. Barbara Ann Van. Jamina Maribel Villafuerte Galavis. Jamina. Jamina Maribel Villafuerte Galavis. <laughs> Felicia Reese Wallace. Cody Lee Michael Williams. George Williams Jr. Shermika. Shermika to Leah Wilson. Tawana Renee Wilson. Emily Gertrude Woodward, magna cum laude. Rhonda T. Barwick, magna cum laude. Juliet Black. Timothy Dwayne Boykin. Floyd Christopher Cherry. Brittany Elizabeth Cowan. Bruce Nicholas Craigwell, cum laude. I'm a Jesus Cruz Monroy. Morgan Elizabeth Evans. Dominique Faison Lamb. Amanda Farina. Valerie Michelle Farrington. Nasir Elijah Green. Stephen D. Hatter. 
Hardy or Hardy? Joshua Philip Hardy. Castillo. Castillo. <laughs> Abigail Castillo Hen. <laughs> Emiliano. Max Emiliano Hernandez. Quincy Lawrence Hill. Kristen L. Hutchinson, cum laude. Evan Dwayne Ireland, magna cum laude. Stanley Wayne Jansen. Kimberly Ann Kelly, magna cum laude. Jeremy T. Kemp. Tabitha S. Marsh. Frederick D. McLam. Jordan Alexis McCrate. Donald Eugene McRaven, magna cum laude. Curtis Nathaniel Miller, cum laude. Victoria Moulet. Rhonda L. Nevin. Pippin. Raymond Lewis Pippin. Gilly David Price. Gilly David Price. Tamaya Janae Reed. Martin Rios. <laughs> we got to see yours now. <laughs> Martin J. Rios. Yolanda Babette Barnes Robinson. Anita Cleopatra. Pamela Anita Cleopatra Rogers. Amy P. Sasser, summa cum laude. Melissa Sue Smith, cum laude. Melissa Ann Stevens, cum laude. <laughs> Kelly Ann True Love, cum laude. Daniel D'Angelo Wade. <laughs> James Vincent Walker II. Elizabeth Ann Wells. Sonia M. West. Takisa R. West. 
Sharnesser. Witcher, right? Sharnesser Levette Witchard. Sarah Jean Weesey. <laughs> Tiffany Humphrey Wilson. Last but never least. Thank you. Richard S. Wolfer Jr. Well, let's again extend our hearty congratulations to each student and families and guests. Before I introduce the final portion of our commencement, there's a couple of people that I think we need to take just a moment to thank. First of all, there's a group that's here that invests of their time, of their money, of their talent, uh, of their expertise. And many of you as students uh, don't have the opportunity to give them a thank you. And that's members of our board of trustees. Would members of our board of trustees please stand so we can recognize you. You know, all of us have been influenced, all of us have been influenced by someone throughout our lives. Many times it's a teacher. And those of you that think back when you started this journey, whether it was two years ago or four, or in my case it was about five years on the bachelor's, I was on the five-year plan, but it was that initial faculty member, a group of faculty, that I got to know at that orientation or that first class. And they made an indelible mark on my life. And I will tell you, just like I have stories about faculty, many of you have shared stories about faculty. Many of you that work here, many of you that are parents that I have the opportunity to meet, talk about those that influenced you. I'd like for our faculty to stand up so we can recognize those that have influenced our graduates. Faculty, would you please stand? Thank you. At this time, please join me in welcoming Mr. Brian DeBose, the president of the University of Mount Olive Alumni Board, to bring a warm welcome to our new alumni. Greetings. On behalf of myself and the UMO Alumni Association, congratulations to you our 2019 graduates, and welcome as the newest members of the University of Mount Olive Alumni Association. It is truly a great day to be a Trojan. We've all taken different paths to get here, but we got here. Some came right out of high school knowing what they wanted to do, got it done in four years. Others went into the military, then they did the college thing. And then others like myself, well, we went to college right out of high school. Then for some reason or other, life happened. We were unable to complete what we started, and we are grateful that UMO had a program which allowed us to finish what we so greatly treasure today. Lastly, some even began college late in life to fulfill a dream or a goal that they had. It does not matter how we got here or how young or even how old we are. The thing that binds us all together is that we are all University of Mount Olive Trojan alumni. This is truly an important event in your life, and you should be proud of your accomplishment. Today, as you embark upon the next chapter of your life, I want to encourage you to never forget your fellow alums, 
and the relationships you created while at Mount Olive, whether here or on the traditional campus or at one of our location centers. The memories of your time here will forever live on in the days, the weeks, months, and years to come. I would like to challenge you to become an active participant in your alumni association. Firstly, association activities are a great way to stay connected to your fellow classmates and to meet other alumni through service opportunities, social events, and reunions. Personally, as a graduate from the Wilmington location, I've had the opportunity to meet and make friendships with alumni from the Mount Olive Junior College years, others like myself from the Mount Olive College years, and with the University of Mount Olive graduates and students. Secondly, active membership is a great way to keep informed on what is happening at UMO. There are exciting changes happening, such as the addition of our new sports teams, wrestling and field hockey, the theater renovation occurring downtown, the new buildings and growth that has occurred out at the farm, and the numerous educational programs that are being implemented, including the flight school, the addition of our two new planes, and not to forget the introduction of the new acapella group, Carolina Sound. And lastly, please consider giving back in service through your time and your talents, as well as financially to your alma mater, the University of Mount Olive. We need your energy, your ideas, and your enthusiasm. A strong, active alumni association is important to the life and the future of any university. You can make a difference. Your gifts make it possible for others to experience and benefit from this life-changing place. Again, I would like to congratulate you, the University of Mount Olive Class of 2019. I encourage you to cherish our heritage and treasure your memories of your time here at the University of Mount Olive. I pray God will bless you, and I look forward to seeing each of you at future alumni events. And one last final note, go Trojans! Well, thank you all for being with us today. And to conclude the ceremony, Mr. Jonathan Sager, Assistant Professor of Music, will lead us in the singing of the Alma Mater, which you will find printed in your program. This will be followed by the benediction presented by Mrs. Geraldine Lee, a member of our Board of Trustees. Our ceremony will conclude with a recessional performed by Mr. Jeremy Downey. Please stay seated following the benediction and during the recessional until graduates have left the building. At this time, please stand for the alma mater and benediction. Hail Mount Olive, alma mater, endless years shall crown thy head. Praise we then our great Creator, who through all the years shall lead. May thy torch of truth grow brighter, still supplied with light divine. Strong and clear and ever burning on the path of wisdom shine. Alma Mater, our dear Mother, honored ever, honored now. Courage, faith, and love devoted be the laurels on thy brow. O Mount Olive, how we love thee, dowered with thy fostering care. Kindest heaven, smile above thee, God exalt and keep thee fair. Let us all pause and acknowledge the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in our presence. Dear Lord, in this moment, let us give thanks for every tassel that has just been turned. On this day, let us be grateful 
for every parent and grandparent, every spouse and child, every brother, sister, and teacher who played a part in the success of these graduates today. We are grateful for the leadership and administration of this institution, which focuses on the values that this world so desperately needs today. We ask that you continue to guide the staff of the University of Mount Olive as they touch the lives of students and graduates yet to come. And in this month, during the season of Advent, as we prepare for the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we ask you to bless each person here as we prepare to take our leave. See us all safely home, guide these graduates as they enter into a new phase of their lives, and bless us all during this season of holy birth and new beginnings. And let us all collectively say, Amen. Amen.